right. I'll write all phrases. Shalom, shalom, family, most high in Christ. Bless. Comments will appear. All right, perfect. It's been a minute since I've been on this thing. All oh, praises. Shalom, family. Well, come on in and let's uh, let's get reading. How y'all doing? How y'all doing, family? All oh, praises. Yeah. Sign of Christ. Bless. Come on in. Shalom, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Oh, praises. Good afternoon, wherever you are in this captivity. I pray that uh, you're doing as best as you can here in this captivity. All right. We're going to get uh, started here shortly, all right? We're going to get started shortly. Yeah, Josiah, it's been a while. It has been a while. Been a little, uh, a little busy, but all praises, we back. Uh-huh, all praises, we are back. Yes, sir. I see the uh, the music sign, Lord willing. I was going to uh, start out with some music, you know what I'm saying, while we getting everybody in the room. But uh, next time, like I said, uh, we'll get that thing going. That's been something I've been wanting to do. But it's good to be back on this thing. All praise. Josiah, it's good to see you, bro. All right. Can y'all hear I see uh, like headphones. I see music symbols. Is there music going on or something? No. I'm a little confused. It's been a long day. Everybody can hear. Everybody can see well. All right, all praises. No music, right? No music playing in the background. That's happened before. <laughs> I'm like reading and the music is playing. I'm like, what's going on? All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So we're going to get started here in about 64 seconds. All right. So uh, this is uh, four chapters a day, scripts 365. All praises to the Most High. I'm Officer Baruch with IUIC Orlando. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and read. We're going to go ahead and read. But first, I'm going to, um, we're going to read from the books of Luke chapter 2 through Luke chapter 5. All right, and I'm going to start out with the statement. We are not a hate group. Israel United in Christ is not affiliated with any other Israelite organization or group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threats, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. It's low on your end. Let me see if I can turn myself up. All right. Hey, sister, chai in the house. Shalom. Sign of Christ. Bless you. Let me see. Hmm. I'm a little dark. See if I can lighten it up. All right. Cool. All right, family. All praises. So, yes. Uh, if you know of any of that, any any call uh, harm coming to any uh, anybody, any groups, let that thing be known. All right. Leviticus 5 and verse 1. Let's send up the prayers. All right. Remember, we're reading out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 5, uh, chapter 2 through chapter 5. Let's send up these prayers. 
Sisters, uncover your heads. Brother, or, <laughs> excuse me. Brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. Let's face Jerusalem. It's towards the east from America. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, O Lord. We ask that you continue to wake up prophets that have been in thy name since the beginning, Lord. We ask that you raise up indignation and pour out wrath upon the enemies that have much pride in these last days, Lord, to think that they can hide your people from the truth. We ask that you continually watch over us and protect us as we go to and fro, protect our families, our children, the wives, the, the women with children. Lord, remove any ailments and illnesses mentally, physically, spiritually, Lord, so that we may call upon your name out of a pure heart and keep your commandments with zeal and put in the works as your scriptures have said. In Jesus Christ's name, open up our mind that we may receive your word today. Amen. All right. All praises to the Most High God. So again, uh, I'm Officer Baruch with IUIC Orlando. This is Scripts 365, a.k.a. four chapters a day, and we're going to read. All right, we're going to read. The first scripture uh, I'm going to open up with uh, so that you understand is 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. Why we do this, okay? Book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, all right? So that's what we're doing. We're giving attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to the doctrine, all right? So let's start. All right, let's start. The book of Luke, chapter 2. All right, Josiah, are you scribing for me today? It's been a while, been a while. And now uh, as I go, I'll pull uh, just a few precepts. My goal is not to... Uh, make this into a class or daily bread or something. This is giving attendance to reading. All right. Let's go. Shalom, Sister Shirley. Most high in Christ bless you. All right, let's go. The book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was, he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in the manger in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Right, we'll come back to that swaddling cloth. Verse eight. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. In the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. About them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day this in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. All right, I'm going to pause right there. And I want to get a precept uh, with Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 4. Just real quick, okay? Because a lot of people think that Christ was born immaculately, uh, that he had no father, that we, and we clearly read that uh, Joseph was from the lineage, the line, the genealogy, the DNA, bloodline of David. All right. So uh, let's read. 
We got four and verse seven. Where am I? Hold on, hold on. Wisdom of Solomon. Oh, I'm chipping. I'm tripping. Seven and four. All right. I'll start up at verse one. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse one. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of light nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes, cloths, and that with cares. Watch this. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life. And the like going out. All right. So this clearly is um, a representation of Christ being the king of Israel as well. No man. Christ was not immaculately uh, conceived. All right. Immaculately conceived. He had a father and he had a mother. All right. So that swaddling clothes, uh, cloths gives it away. All right. Let's go back to the scripture. Luke chapter 2 and verse 12. One more time. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. All right. Remember in Galatians four, it talks about how Christ was born, uh, was made under the law. All right. This is part of that law. All right. In regards to con being conceived of a woman from the seed of man and a sacrifice had to be made for Christ or excuse me, um, circumcision had to be made for Christ uh, on the eighth day and also a sacrifice for Christ. But that's neither here nor there. Just pay attention. Verse 22. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ, the Lord's Christ. And he came by the spirit into the temple. And when his parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, 
and a light to lighten the Gentiles in the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again, again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. That thy, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of fin Fenuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great of a great age. She had lived and hunt an, excuse me, and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a a widow of about four score and four years. And departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. Excuse me, in Jerusalem. Verse 39. And when they had prepared all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew. And wax strong and wax strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now when his now when his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they returned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou, uh, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and became and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. All right. So we just read. Chapter 2, um, where uh, Christ was born, okay, not immaculately. As we read, he had a father and a mother, and they dealt with him after the manner of the law, all right? They disciplined him, and uh, he was subject to his parents, okay? So, let's, uh, so if discipline was good enough for Christ, it's good enough for me. Now, nah, but let's read chapter 3. Okay. Um, we also read that Asher, the tribe of Asher, some of the tribe of Asher was still in there. That's one of the examples. Uh, the sister Anna, a prophetess, uh, pray for Christ, and Simeon, pray for Christ, or uh, his parents. Okay. Chapter three. You ready? The book of Luke, chapter three and verse one. Now, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Pontius Pilate being governor over of Judea and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iteria and of the region of Trachon Trachonitis and Lacinius, the tetrarch of A Abilene, Annas and Cyphus 
being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. All right, so in, in verse two, we see that there's only, we are, we see that there's two high priests. It was only supposed to be one. All right, so um, we see things were out of order during that moment. Verse three, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of, uh, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he, to the multitude that came forth of the baptism of him, to be baptized of him, excuse me. O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our fathers. For I say unto you, that God is able, able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said, saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that have none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came, so, then came also publicans, which are tax collectors, to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in the, their hearts of John, whether he were of the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, that cometh the latches of whom shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff will burn with fire unquenchable. Verse 18, and many, and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved of him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet, yet this above all, that he should shut that that he shut up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. All right, that son of Heli's son in law, son in law, all right, of Heli, um, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Mokai, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. All right, um, let's continue. 25, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Naom, which was the son of Els Esli, which was the son of Neg Negi, which was the son of Maat, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, 
which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Rasa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Sal Salatiel, which was the son of ne Nerai, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adi, which was the son of Kosum, which was the son of El Elmodan, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Jasi, which was the son of Eleazar, which was the son of Jorim, which was the son of Matat, Matat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Ele Eliakim, Eliakim, excuse me, which was the son of Mel Mele Melea, which was the son of Manan, which was the son of Maratatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salman, which was the son of Naasan, which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Pharez, Pharez, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Tharah, which was the son of Nakor, which was the son of Saruk, which was the son of Ragu, which was the son of Philek, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Selah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxed, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Ma'alel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Okay, here we go. So we uh, we just read both about the genealogy or um, yeah the genealogy of Christ um, according to Mary's family line. We also read. Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Give me one second. We read about the genealogy of Christ, um, where it says the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. It's talking about uh, the son-in-law of Heli. We also read John addressing the Israel that's coming to be baptized, all right? Telling them to repent. And this is where we read where it says, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, all right? A lot of people think they just get baptized, dipped in water and whatnot, and don't have no works with it. That's not how it goes. All right, that's not how it works. You got to bring forth fruits worthy, is works worthy of repentance. Okay, so let's continue into Luke chapter 4. All right, Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. There may be a couple that I precepts to bring out of here, but we'll see. All right. The book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse, uh-oh, verse 1. Give me one second. All right, here we go. Luke, chapter 4 and verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward a hunger. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. All right. So he went back to the book of Deuteronomy. All right. This was Deuteronomy 8. 
And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All right, because uh, there was a question that was asked this past Sabbath when I was in San Diego. If um, it was uh, a physical man or if it was Satan himself or the devil himself. All right, no man can show you all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All right, so let's go. Verse six, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. All right, now we know how Esau got their power. <laughs> they worshiped the devil. Verse eight, and Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Again, he went and fought with the scriptures, a spiritual battle from Deuteronomy chapter six. Okay. Verse nine, and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time they shall thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And, in, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that be bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture, for this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician heal them thyself. Whatsoever he have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Verse 25, but I will tell you a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when the great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a, si a city of Zidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the days of Elias. Elisias the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, saying, Nahum, and Syria, uh, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill wherein this, their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of, the, of them, went his way and came down into Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue 
there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. All right. So that goes to show, too, this demon, he said, I know God. Yeah, I know you're the, the Holy One of God. That shows you. And this man was in the synagogue. That shows you that the church is full of devils that say that they know God. <laughs> All right. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Saying you know him and actually doing what he says do. That's how you show that you know. All right. Here we go. Again, verse 35. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown himself in the mist, he came out of him and hurt him not. Verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. And the fame of him went out into every place on the country round about. And he, rose, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hand over every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, and he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, and he that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore I am sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. All right. So we see Christ wasn't playing. Christ was going to the churches. You understand? He was going to the world of Israel, preaching the kingdom of God. Some, he, some wanted the word. Some didn't want the word. But those that did receive the word were healed. And we also see that some of these synagogues were full of demons or people with demons in them. So much so that they tried to kill Christ. All right. All praises. All praises. So um, that was Christ in, in Nazareth. That was Christ going through Galilee. That was Christ reading the scriptures, rebuking uh, Satan himself with the word of God. That's the only way we're going to win is through the word. All right. So let's uh let's continue to chapter five. All right, are we ready? Let's get it. The book of Luke, chapter five and verse one. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and sought the people out of and, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So this is his first encounter with Simon. Alright, Simon got a uh he got some um not his first encounter, but this is this is another encounter with Simon. First he healed his uh, mother. Now he's stepping into his ship. I'm starting to feel like this thing was ordained. <laughs> All right. Anyway, verse four. Now when he, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter five and verse four. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. 
Nevertheless, all thy word, I will let down the net. At thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were with him, and the drought of the fishes which they had taken. All right. So Peter himself confessed that he was a sinful man and knew that Christ was, that Jesus was the Christ. All right. Just because, and that's what, sidebar, a lot of Christians, they say, oh, you can't keep the laws, everybody sin, but it's a difference from confessing your sin and bringing forth fruits of repentance. That's what changes you and not going back to it. Repentance. These Christians get on my nerves. These so-called Christians, I'm telling you. Luke chapter five and verse nine. For he was astonished and all, the, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which, had they, which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had, hurt, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priests and offer thy cleansing according to Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there was Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every t town of Galilee, and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a, with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through this tiling which with his couch unto the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto him, said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. And he, and he said unto the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he arose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. <laughs> Verse 27. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi, saying, at the receipt of sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Remember, a, a publican is a tax collector. All right, so Levi was a tax collector. All right. 
or Matthew was a tax collector. Same thing. Verse 28. And he fell and he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Verse 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often? And make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the and the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent. And the peace that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine in old bottles. Else the new wine will burst and burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, the old is better. All right, family, all praises to the Most High God. All right, in chapter five, we see that Christ is doing his works. He's doing the healing and he's seeing a lot of the faith of those that would go literally out of their way to be healed by the word of God. Okay, and then we see some on the side that are haters of Christ, okay, that were hating by his works, that were hating of, of his mission, okay? We see men literally ripping the tiles, the tiles off of the house to let this man down so Christ could pray for him. That goes into a uh, sidebar. That goes into the faith we have in regards to our family. Okay, they went out of their way for their family and their friends to be healed. Are you praying for your family and your friends that they may be healed? Sometimes we got to go out of our way, all right? But sometimes our wicked family members, <laughs> they just ain't going to listen, all right? But that was Scripts 365, okay? Um, I pray that you all receive something, marked up your Bibles, highlight, and, um, you know, write down your questions, propose them. Pose them, pose them to your leadership. All right. And uh, again, I am blessed to be here. Scripts 365, Officer Baruch, IUIC, Orlando. All right. Uh, I forgot to ask. Do we do any questions here? Do we take questions? Dang. But I think I'm just supposed to read. It's been a minute since I've been on this thing. All praises to the Most High God. Yep, keep them in prayer. Keep them in prayer. And show your show your good works. All right, keep them in prayer and show your good works. Hey, thank you uh thank you for scribing all praises to the most high. Thank you all for joining in. All praises, all praises. All right, family, I'm out of here. Shalom to you and most high in Christ. Bless. Shalom.